Welcome to The Chris Duncan Show. You ask questions and I answer them. Everything, super conscious, magnetic mind, transformation, creating a life you love and success. You've got questions and I've got answers. All right. This looks like we're here. Are we all here? I'm here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the, the third installment of, uh, of my show. Welcome to everyone who's here who is live and then all of those that are out there listening on uh, YouTube uh, or uh, Spotify or iTunes. It's been absolutely wonderful to, to reach so many people. Uh, I believe that the first show, there was nearly 6,000 uh, listeners and the second one's at about 4,000 listeners. So uh, that's pretty, that's, that's something, isn't it? That's something. So it's so great, uh, great to have all of you here who are here and uh, great to have everyone who's here but on a replay and maybe some of you are listening to this in a long distant future uh, moment and welcome to you as well. Uh, I, I'm just absolutely, uh, absolutely thrilled to be sharing, uh, sharing this knowledge with you guys, which is, uh, which is what we're all here to do, isn't it? So, uh, hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The premise of this show is it's a, it's a question and answer format. The, the questions have been provided uh, by my masterclass uh, clients. So we run a 12-month uh, masterclass called the Magnetic Mind Masterclass. We do coaching sessions. There's a university. There's live events. And the, the people in that program ask some really, really, really great questions. And so I decided that uh, I would answer the questions and then put it out there for the world to, to acknowledge the uh, the answers. So it's, it's pretty simple. The questions have been sent in. I, I've got them and uh, I'll, I'll answer, answer those questions and uh, we'll have some fun uh, exploring the superconscious field. Now, if you'd like to be part of the masterclass, there is a link that you can uh, be a part of it. Unfortunately, I'm not taking questions from people outside of the masterclass. And the reason is, is that many of the basics are already answered there. Uh, and, and I really want to answer questions about applying the work and doing it. So, so hey, if that's something you want to be a part of, go check it out. It's absolutely wonderful. It's the last program you'll, you'll ever need to have. And uh, it really will teach you how to consciously create uh, everything and anything that you truly desire. So uh, what, what was interesting yesterday on a session was, was we, were, we were working with some of our certified coaches. And, and what's interesting about, about a lot of the people who decide to make this their life's work is they, they create choices in their life that are so grandiose, so big, that, uh, that the, and they pretend that those are really their choices. And the one we we're working with yesterday was uh, someone who said, you know, my choice is to, uh, to, to uh, evolve human consciousness or something along those lines. And what was interesting about this, this person, amazing lady, I love her so much. And she's saying, you know, that's, that's my, my choice. And for some reason, it's not moving, Chris. Why is this not moving? And, uh, and I said to her, I said, it's because the, the choice isn't true. It's, it's, not, it's not a true choice. And she's like, yes, it is. I want, you know, she said, yes, it is. I want, I want to evolve human consciousness. I said, okay, uh, so how can you experience that? How are you going to be able to have that? Tell me what you love about that choice and, and and here's what i said i said i don't know if i'm right or wrong but but here's what what i what's true is that the only reason that you have that as a choice in your life is by first projecting negative vision onto the world that the world's not whole that the world's not uh it's, it's not it's not valid the way it is and that i must change it and if I was to change it, then it would be different and it would be, it would be amazing. And, and it all sounds good, doesn't it? This sounds like, oh, that's a good choice to have in the world. It sounds noble. It sounds like something that we, you know, that's a good thing to go for, isn't it? Doesn't that, it sounds like a good thing. But, but the truth is, is, is how, how is that even possible for one person to obtain? And, and what's really saying is how all these other human beings are choosing to be and their low level consciousness is wrong. 
and so there's this there's this uh there's a, an aspect of judgment in this choice isn't there it's saying the way that you've chosen to be is wrong so what what is it what's really in the, the way that your consciousness is is not right you see and i'm going to evolve i'm going to make it something bigger and so I get this a lot, eh? That's why the, the answer is there for me. It's very present. It's, it's one of the things that I used to have. It's, it's oh, I'm going to do this, this big, noble thing. Yet when you really feel into it, it, it comes from a place of, of, of actually saying the world's not right and I need to fix it. But it also doesn't come from your heart. Because what do you really love? What would you really love? This is a question I asked this person. What would you really love to experience and to have? And, to, and what came is she said, you know what? The only reason I have that as a choice is I'm not actually allowed to enjoy myself and have fun. She said, I, I, I'm not actually allowed. She said, instead, my life has to be about doing this big thing. And if I was to do this big thing, I'd finally be seen as good enough or my life would have meaning or would have purpose. I'm not, I'm not able just to have fun and enjoy the, enjoy the world. And it was such a big insight. I wanted to start off with it today. Who, who got something out of that insight? Because I did. I did. I got a lot out of this. When, when you're creating, when you're creating true choices, for, for, it must come. What, do you, what would you love to experience? What would you love to see, Matt? What would you just love? And it comes from a place where everything is already as good as it can get. At any moment, when any moment you're going for something and you think that that will be better, you're actually subconsciously, unconsciously deciding that the way it is now is not right. You see? And all you're doing is conditioning your identity to seek a future that is better, only to realize as you arrive at that future that was supposed to be better, you're still the same with the same identity that believes a future must be better. And so the, the real problem with, with this is that this, this the person who, who goes and puts these big things out, they can't just accept the now. They're so scared to accept joy in the moment and love the now. So instead of accepting that they can have all the abundance and richness and joy and all these things, they set out on some crazy idea that if they were to get that, that would then make the world right. And it never happens. It never happens. And it's why when you talk to these, these people after years that they have these big plans, they're never successful in actually completing these plans because their heart's not actually in that plan. Their heart's in actually how the world is wrong. Isn't that interesting? Their heart, their, their focus. And so what are they expecting? What are they fascinated by how it's wrong? See, uh, one of my coaches said to me, Chris, you become what fascinates you. And, and too many people that, that think that they're in the fascination of creation or success are actually in the fascination of, of, of how the world is against them or how it's wrong or these sort of things. That's actually, that's actually their fascination or, or they're actually fascinated with how others aren't conscious enough. That is actually their fascination. They're actually connected to that. It's very, it's a very big deal. When, when you're creating, when you're creating, you, you must create from a place that you already are it. So type this in, write it down, tattoo it on the gray matter of your brain. You must be it to see it. And it refers to you be it, you be, be the super conscious aspect of you, your connection to source, you be it. And when you are it, you live in a, a, a positive expectation uh, of the inevitable end result that's going to manifest because you already are it. You, 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 you know that you, you're already it. You already have access to every single possible option. You already are it. You already are all the options. You allow all the options to be there. And as you allow it, then you simply choose which option you would like to then create because you love it. And then you step into the inevitability of it. The inevitability. It's inevitable that will happen. 
the, the, the positive expectation that of course it's going to happen. It's magic. And, and, and you step into that magic. <laughs> but any other time when you, oh, well, I'm going to do this because it's going to fix things. It's going to change things. You, you're setting out a counter, uh, a, a counter field, you, you, a, a, a counter frequency or a counter. Um, you're in phase. You're, you're in phase with the opposite. You're saying, I want this world to be this way. But what you're also feeling is that it's not this way. So you're sending out two different, you know, two different waves that are going to conflict with each other. And so then as you go to create, you feel those waves like a boat going over big waves because you've got two things in the field. Instead of accepting them all, getting focused and flowing, that, that's magic. That's magic, my friends. Hey, welcome to the session, guys. Right where I am right now, it's 11, 11. Uh, that means something. That means something. It's it's a spiritual number. It's 11, 11 a.m. And uh, I'm grateful to be here. So let's get to some questions that have uh, that have been sent. And I've got uh, I've got Scott here in the office with me. And as soon as it says 11, 11, he's, he's sitting over here, cracking up at me, trying to put me off. <laughs> OK, here's the uh, here's the first question. So uh, first question uh, for, from Mary. I, I don't see your last name. So, so Mary, I hope you, you know that I got your question. It says, I'm working on a project that requires me to find the right people. Okay. How can the rapid recode process help me to achieve that? Okay. Uh, which is, uh, so the rapid recode process, the, the five steps to, to creation, choose what you want, uh, feel it, acknowledge where you are now, create structural tension, remove resistance and take action. Well, it's, it's obvious, but, but here's what's obvious about that question is you've decided that the project needs the right people. You're already trying to control what needs to happen. So, so, so let go of how you think that uh, the manifestation will happen. Let go of that, get into the end result of what you want to create, remove any resistance and then ask yourself, what is the obvious action that needs to happen to, to see that turn from a thought into a thing? Okay. Uh, when you're working it out, by trying to work it out and it needs this and it must be this way, you're, you're, you're simply living in the present trying to push to a future. When we're super conscious, when we're in creation, we go to the future, we look back to the now and we receive the information back. Okay, and then we're pulled to the future. It's the difference between forcing and being powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, 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 good. Okay, so next question from Alexis Can you explain how it actually works in the brain, or is it another way of becoming aware of your beliefs? Yeah, so there was, there's some really great science uh, around neuroplasticity about how the brain reconsolidates. So if you want to understand some science, there's, a, there's, a really, uh, there's some really great, great research out there. The first piece of great research is uh, the reconsolidation moment, reconsolidation moment. Discovered in 2001, it's the moment when two neurons um, uh, Un unplug and reconsolidate as you as you have a new awareness or an aha moment. Okay, so you believed it to be one way, they actually shift and change. And, and the field of neuroplasticity tells us that the, the brain is not uh, hardwired in. It's actually able to uh, to shift and recode and reconsolidate whenever it chooses. And that, that is how that is how learning happens, isn't it? You know, that, that is how learning happens. It, we learn by reconsolidating our, our, the way that we think, and, and we know this. So, so I would look at uh, Norman Doig's work, uh, how the brain heals and the brain that changes itself. So I'd look at that. Uh, Hebb's principle is another great place to go to really get some science. Dispenza's work is amazing. Dr. Joe Dispenza got so much love for that man. Hey, you know, his... Uh, his, his books and his work, and I've, I've done a lot of his work. He, he's, he's, he explains things really well. Uh, have a look at Bruce Lipton and the biology of belief. I love Lynn McTaggart's work, um, the field and the intention experiments. 
Uh, but someone who really not many people know of that's actually got some great work, uh, two, two people. One is uh, Dr. Gary Flint, um, uh, wrote the, the, process, the process healing method and the, the treatment of your personality. Really, really good work. And then uh, William Tiller, T-I-L-L-I-E-R, and he's a Stanford um, professor, I guess. We, he's at Stanford, and, and he's got some, some really great science. The book that I'm looking at over there is uh, The Conscious Arts of Creation, and, and, and he's talked a lot about how the field and, this, and superconscious fields work. So, uh, so anyway, there, there's some people to look at and, and to understand the science. Uh, I'm not a scientist, and so I can base what, what we do on on these principles that are, that are really easily observed. So, so there, there you go. There, there's some places to go have a look for some some science if if you wish for for more. If you wish for more of it, I mean the the Hibbs principle or Hibbs rule has been around for a very long time, which you know basically is is neurons that fire together wire together, and uh, the pruning effect. You know, if you use it, you lose it. So, so we understand this, and we, we've simply given our power away. You know that we we've given our power away we don't realize we have the power to let go of anything that's stopping us because we are the consciousness creating it all and, and that is such a big thing to understand hey uh yeah so so britney says uh, after recoding and shifting a few times i made massive progress but i can feel my old identity wanting to shift back how do i keep progressing and move past this tension so, so it, it's true, we have two perspectives, well, we have three, but we have two real big perspectives. We have our identity perspective, our self-conscious limited perspective, and then we have our super-conscious higher self perspective. So, so, so a little exercise to do, okay, is first allow the, the self-conscious. So, so guys, everyone that's on here live and anyone on a replay, I want you just to think about a conflict in your life. Just think about a conflict in your life. Just, just work, just play, play with me on this. Think about something that's conflicted. And, and as you feel, oh, I feel conflicted about this goal or, you know, about this relationship or about what I need to do. Just, just notice you've got a conflict somewhere. Just, just acknowledge it, hey? And then just allow yourself to feel that conflict. Don't judge it. Don't avoid it. Just allow yourself to feel it, whatever it is. Don't label it. Just allow yourself to feel it. And as you allow yourself to feel it, ask yourself, what is this, what is this trying to tell me? Right? What is it trying to tell me? What, what does this feeling want me to do? And just acknowledge it. It, might, it wants me to run away. It wants me to be scared. It wants me to yell, get angry, judge, blame. What does it want me to do? Just allow it to be there. Just allow it to be there. No judgment, just stay with it. Now just let that go for a second. So close your eyes, unless you're driving, obviously, it's not advised. Close your eyes. Let it go. And just choose to raise to your superconscious perspective. So your highest perspective, your divinity, your just choose to choose to raise your vibration to, to source where you're connected to everything. You are all things. You're an energetic spirit living inside a human skin suit, having a experience, having a journey towards creating what you love. Just, just allow yourself to, to experience yourself from that soul perspective. There you go. Now, from this perspective, how's that problem? How's that problem? From this perspective, where you are everything, the creator of it all, when you, when you connect this part of you, how's that problem? And now let me know in the, in the chat box, how's that problem? What changed? What's obvious from this perspective? Someone says very small, non-existent. Wants me to reclaim my power. Not a problem. What problem? Question mark. Tiny. It's a zero. It's silly. It's silly, says Bria. Cool. Meant to be. Okay, cool. Vanished. It just is. <laughs> I know, Bria. <laughs> I am the creator. And I'm more powerful than that silly issue. Thank you. So Brittany, who asked the question, she says, I simply feel I'm the creator and I'm more powerful. 
It's already gone, says Diane. Nice. Someone just wrote, but oh, that's Brittany. She says boom. Who just so so Brittany, you asked the question, hey. So that, that this was uh this was your question. So so here's the answer. At any moment, you have the ability to rise up and experience life from your superconscious perspective. Now, some of you, you might have had a hard time rising up. You might not be in the work. The people that are typing in, I believe, are in my masterclass and they're learning how to do this. Hey? Now, where, whatever you give the power to get stronger. So, so the more times that you give the power to your superconscious awareness, the more times that you rise up and you go, what's, it, what's the truth about this? You give the power to it. And you tell, you teach yourself a, a new habit. And, and every time that you stay down in the self-conscious, uh, limited perspective of judgment and humanness, you, you give the power to that. So there you go. There you go. There's something. From this higher perspective, what is the obvious action you must take? And, and let me know, right? And what's obvious from up here? See, see when you rise up, and you and you acknowledge it from there okay you you can then take the correct action and, and notice we didn't make the self-conscious bad we didn't say it was bad did we we didn't say it was wrong we never said it was wrong for being it's in its limitation see we didn't need to fix it someone says i don't know i'm afraid to take a chance okay acknowledge that pain allow it to be there and now do the exact process I just told you. Allow that to be there. Notice what it wants you to do. I'm scared of risk. I'm scared of being, and notice it, and then let it go and come up. And, and look, you know, obviously some of you here aren't in the masterclass. So, so you, you, you might be going, well, this is really, this is, this is, this is pretty hardcore coaching. You, you might not be able to do this. You do need to be in that program. But, but those of you who can, you watch as it just drops away and you're able to, to be up there. It is cool. Who thinks that's cool? Was that a good little process? Very easy, isn't it? Easy one. Very easy one. Okay, good stuff. Okay, so this is a bit of a longer question. Uh, so we might summarize it, but I'll read it out now. Uh, it's from Amy. I'd love an analogy to help me conceptualize how to bring up resistance for a recode without adding focus or energy to it, but creating enough tension to move out of resistance. A silly one I have so far pertains to house cleaning. When I'm vacuuming, I make a point to move the couch to vacuum the dust. And while they don't make my life, I love cleaning them. However, my hairball... Uh, however, my kitties yorks up a nasty hairball. I judge that it's icky and cleaner from a space of resistance. So if I'm doing a recode on gross hairballs, I might find there is a after recode by treating my judgment of the gross hairball. I can essence not. I simply this is does this edit look, you know, it, it's a good, it's a it's a question that says basically, hey Chris, uh, there's stuff in life that I have to deal with that I wish I didn't have to deal with. You know, and, and so so this person's using the idea. Of, well, I love vacuuming my house, but sometimes there's a gross hairball that my kitten has spewed up, or, or whatever it is. And um, and, and that's a that's a thing. So so here's here's what's true: it is as you're creating and what you're doing, there's going to be lots of things that uh, you prefer you didn't have to deal with. Yet. If, if we didn't have those things, uh, human life would be like, um, who's seen that movie Pleasantville? You guys seen the movie Pleasantville? Anyone seen that? Where everything's just so pleasant and there's nothing to deal with? Uh, and, and none of us look at the movie and go, oh, that's the kind of place we want to live, hey? Uh, so, so look, it, it's allowing yourself to know that as you're creating, you know, you're going to have to deal with it. That there's going to be a hairball that you've got to clean up or whatever. And uh, there's, there's always a way to, to create the, the life the way that you want it. You know, myself, I have someone clean my house for me, <laughs> you know, so you can go and create a way to not have to deal with it. So, so look, uh, it's really not a relevant question for, um, for the recode process. How, how the recode process does work, though, is uh, <laughs> how the pro pro recode process does work is is by using structural tension, we force the resistance up into our active experience. 
Okay, so we say this is what I want, and this is this is where I am now. Okay, and as we do this, we say I'm about to take this action. Our identity forces up resistance to stop us taking that action if it determines that this end result is is scary or or, or risky. Okay, and so as we as we set up the first three steps of the recode we force all the resistance to show itself. As we say, I'm gonna go do this, the resistance turns up. And then as soon as, we, that's how we get it. That's how we get it. We use a tension structure. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Good question. Okay. Uh, next question. Lots of questions on recode process today. What is the rapid recode process? That's an interesting question. So I'm going to talk about that. It's an interesting one. What is the rapid recode process and how, how, can, I, how can it help me? So the rapid recode process is a process that teaches your superconscious how to let go of emotions, beliefs, and uh, many other uh, aspects that are in the way of the creation that you desire. It is a teaching mechanism that empowers an individual to be able to, to be the powerful creator instead of the victim to their beliefs or their emotions or these things. So the rapid recode process is, a, is firstly an education, okay? We desire to educate people, myself and all, all of the coaches. Uh, we, have lot, we have some certified coaches on here as well. And, and uh, many. we desire to leave our person knowing that they are the creative force in their life. And they have the ability to shift and change and recode and let go of whatever's in the way. The recode process returns the power back to the individual, you see? Because when you realize that you are the powerful creator of everything, you also realize that you are not broken. You're not broken at all. There's nothing to fix. You're powerful. And we've had some amazing transformations, uh, people letting go of lots of old stuff, health conditions, eyesight returning, uh, physical conditions, diabetes, marriages, making weight, letting go of limitation around, just letting it go. See, the most important thing is to know you powerful. And, and powerful isn't meaning that someone else is powerless. They're that powerful too. And, and everyone has the same power to, to create. It's a, it's a very important thing that you acknowledge that everyone else has the power to create whatever it is that they want to create in their life. You see, and they don't need saving or fixing either. It's a hard thing, isn't it? You know, it's a hard thing where to acknowledge that all adults have the ability to create whatever it is that they like. So, so, so that's what I would, that's how I'd explain what the rapid recode process is. So, so how can, how can this work help you? This work's going to help you to learn how to turn your biggest heart's desires into reality. Your biggest heart's desires into reality. That's what it's going to do. It's going to help you to find your biggest heart's desires and turn that into reality. Turn it into something that you want to see. And so it allows you to be that creative force in your life again. So that, that you can actually, this is what I want to create. This is what I want to do. And then you actually can follow through on it and make it happen. It's going to help you to be powerful again. See, most of the work out there in this world actually enrolls you in an idea that you're powerless. That if you don't believe, if you don't think like this, if you don't believe a certain way, or if you don't do enough of these sessions, if you don't do enough inner work, if you, if you don't be a different way, then you can't be successful. Those of you that are on live, and maybe if you're watching the replay, just, just type in, let me know if you've, you, you know, that's actually a theme out there, is you, you can't be successful the way you are, is, is what I hear out there. You must think this way, you must do deeper work, you must, you must do all these things. Instead of realizing, hey, you know what? 
No, you, you, you're perfect. You've just got to allow all aspects of you to shine. See, you just got, you just got to do that. You, you're actually whole and perfect. You know, you're actually whole. Uh, you're, you're actually perfect. Once we acknowledge that and reclaim our power, we simply choose. And as we choose what we're creating, the aspects of us that were in the way, they, they just dropped off. They just drop off. They're not, they're not needed anymore, all these limitations. You, know? you, you must always ask yourself the question, where's the power being given? Because in, in, in any structure, wherever the power is, so here, if I put these two ends apart, the power is in bringing these two ends together. So you always must ask, power, where the power is put is where it's going to resolve to. So you must always uh, ask yourself, where am I putting the power? Many people put the power in how they are not able to achieve something the way they are. They think that there's a way they must be. They must learn more, be more, be more perfect, be more worthy, do good things. There's a way they must be. In the misguided notion that if they were to be a different way, then they would be gifted all that they want. And that sets up a life of focusing on yourself, trying to fix everything, and no room for magic. No room for magic. And we, we must allow room for the magic, the miraculous. You see, I didn't start out wanting to have a super conscious coaching business. <laughs> I didn't at all. One day, sitting in meditation, I got, I got a very clear image to, to go out there and do a recode and, and to invite a bunch of people and do one live. I've never, I've never even done a recode at all with my team. I hadn't, I hadn't done it. I just had it done on... I, and I put this process, and I was just working on it, just myself. That was it. And anyway, I invited some people down. I brought two women on stage. I videoed it. I don't know why I videoed it. <laughs> and then I did nothing with it for six months. And then I was sitting in meditation, and I was there, and I was, I was tuning into life. And I just, I got this clear image of the United States map and YouTube. So I got that video, which I'd only had on Facebook at that stage, and and uh, this was end of 2019. I put it up on uh, YouTube and I, and I, and I put it, I think I put like $300 um, on, on an advertising budget. And at the end of the video, I said, Hey, you know, come try a session with me for 99 bucks. And that was it. And I left it. And I think that was on a Friday. And by the Monday, it spent 300 a day times three days or something. And I had like 15 sessions. So I put the price up from 300 to 500. And, and now, uh, you know, that video has been seen by over 10 million people. It's just magic. It wasn't, you know, I didn't, there wasn't any thinking behind it. It was just magic. It was tuning in. It was having no resistance and taking and taking action, you know. Uh, you know, that, that video this last month has been seen by 1.2 million people. And it, it built from that video, basically, to be honest with you, uh, from from that video, our uh, conscious education company was born. I, I had I, Scotty, who was sitting in the office with me a second ago, uh, took over the other company, and uh, and that company does really well, and that's awesome. And so he started running that company for me, and and then conscious education just took off, and now it does uh, over a million dollars a month in sales. So it's just it's just magic, you know. It's just magic. But here's the thing: I didn't change, hey. It wasn't about me. It was simply that this that I that I just did something up, followed through. Now there was things that had to be done. Hey, like there's things that had to be done. I mean, I got the intuition, but I had to follow through on it, didn't I? I had to have already, you know, done the work and been applying this work to myself, and I had to have already, you know, been able to master it for for a long time internally, and then I had to be able to, you know, already know how to be a public speaker. And uh, but I had to also I had to know how to go put on the seminar. So I had to still do things. Eh? So I had to take action. But but the the idea is it wasn't sitting there trying to to figure it out and decide it. I just sort of went, you know, it just happened. And so, so anyway, I think you guys are getting it. I think you guys are getting it.
It's very, very, very cool. Uh, so someone's, someone's had a really interesting question, so I, I can answer it uh, now. It says, how many times should I do a recode? Is it a one-time fix? <laughs> And I think we all, we all know the answer to that, don't we? Is, is there's, no th there's nothing to fix. Many, many people come to me and say, Chris, I've seen your video. Uh, I need you to cure my anxiety or cure. I, I, I drink too much, man, or I, I can't stop smoking. Can you fix it? Chris, you know, I've got this problem. I've got that problem. Chris, I suck with money. Can you fix it? And I always say no. No. Chris, I, I've been diagnosed. I... You know, I, I've seen that, you know, you, you've had someone message in about how they no longer have uh, tumors in their body. I just got diagnosed with a tumor. Can you fix it? Say, I say, say no. No, no, I can't. Uh, I can't. This, uh, can't fix it. I can't, can't fix it. But I can teach someone. I can teach someone to create what it is that they choose. So I can teach them to create a healthy body. I can teach them to create confidence. I can teach them to create a healthy, uh, you know, being a non-smoker. I can, I can teach them to enjoy life without alcohol. I can, I can teach them how to do that and let go of all the aspects that were locking them into the old identity. I can teach them that, but I can never, ever fix because by fixing i'm only working with the wounded identity that believes that there is something wrong that needs to be fixed in order for them to experience their life and all that i do is i observe them in that reality and it creates a secondary belief that says i need someone else to fix me and if i didn't get this fixing if i didn't get this then i wouldn't be able to have what i want and so it sets them up for a lifetime of absolute problems. And you know what? I put the stake in the ground and I said, no longer will I let the personal development world screw people up. I just won't let it happen. I won't let it happen anymore. I won't let people turn up to courses and get told that you're not able to create the way you are and that you have to come and get fixed. You can't. There's nothing to fix. Or as it does, who, who's done it? Who's seen someone waste 30 or 40 years going to the next course, the next course, the next course, the next course, thinking that the next, the next course is, of course, the one that will finally fix the problem? Where's the power? They give their power to, oh, you know, I've just, I had this, this bad upbringing, or they give the power to that they've got indecision, or they give the power to their anger. Imagine if anger was bigger than a human spirit. Imagine if, if, if one negative belief was bigger than a human spirit. Oh, Chris, you may, imagine if overthinking was bigger than the human spirit, right? That's like saying, you know, that you can, you know, the human spirit is big. It's like the sun, you know, you can't, you, you know, these little things, only if you give them the power, can they then, they, can they then hinder you? True. It's only when the power is given to it. See, we live in this wacky idea in this society at the moment that unless you're completely positive, you can't be successful. Or unless you, you know, it, it, you know here's one that is, is always interesting to me, to some, someone that's come from no money to lots of money, the, the idea that, that you hear, and, and who's, who's heard this, hey? And just type in and let me know or do the little hand up. Who's heard that you must feel abundant in order to make money? Who, who's heard this? Yeah, no, I'm always I've got is a page of people typing in yeses. It's it's absolute crap, isn't it? And we know it is. Like deep down, we know it is. We we all know someone who's got lots of money that doesn't dance around feeling abundant. And then we all know someone who dances around and feels abundant that has no money. True. True. So you ready for it? If, if you want to create abundance, then you must feel abundant. What's it got to do with money? If you want to create money, you must follow the structure of creating money. See, the person who feels abundant feels abundant. 
The person who's feeling scarce is feeling scarce. And both of them could have money or not have money. I've met really rich people, big mansions, heaps of money, but they, they feel scarce. They, they don't want to spend their money. They're not in abundance at all, but they have lots of money. And then I've seen others who are so abundant, but they got nothing. <laughs> you don't have to feel a certain way to create something. It's ridiculous. You just have to feel it. Whatever the it is, you're creating. <laughs> and if you choose to tie abundance to money, well, then you will have to feel abundance. <laughs> but if you choose to feel the way that you like to feel in life, which, you know, for me, I like feeling intense. I like feeling busy. I like feeling all sorts of things. Uh, I'm not really the type. You, you probably would never catch me sitting at the beach just chilling out. You know, people that know me, they go, well, I know that Chris is pretty much on a video every single day teaching. You know, he's not, you know, and I know that he rides his motorcycle and he plays tennis. I know that's, that's him. But for a while, I was convinced that I had to do like long meditations and sit on the beach and try to be in this flowing abundance because if I could do that, it would get me money. But I hated it, you know, <laughs> it's like, that's not me. So instead, I just chose to be myself and also chose to have lots of money. <laughs> Does it, isn't it true though, hey? So many misguided ideas misguided ideas you just got to be it you got to be the it that you are creating and, and realize that it's the way you want it true who, who knows this is true let me know is, is you you must be the way you want it to be if, if you want to be this then that's the way you're going to be there's no right there's no wrong you're you're a powerful creative force here to create what you love hey it's just true it's just true all right, next question. Next, <laughs> the next question is about money and abundance. How perfect is that? Okay, so maybe I should have read this question before I just said all that. Uh, hey, Chris, loving this work. My question is about money and abundance. We we've sat on a pendulum swing for so long, it's exhausting. Currently in the downswing. How do I stop the swing, but on the upside? Right. You, you, you know, the, the whole question is based on the wrong premise. How do I stop the swing? Rise above it. Rise above it, you know? Right, rise above. You, you don't stop the swing by pushing against the swing, do you? The more that you push against the swing, to, I guess, allow a swing to stop moving, okay? It's understanding the fact that you rise to the fulcrum. When you rise up, when you rise yourself up to the fulcrum, then the swing will, will stop moving. But in order to rise up, you must not be in resistance to the swing. If you're pushing against a, a swing that is saying abundance is one way and scarcity is another, what are you really saying? I'm scared of going broke. I'm scared of going broke. So where is the expectation in your life? Where is the power? You can see the structure of this person. If I'm rich, I'm successful. If I'm broke, I'm, I'm not successful. Okay, that's the structure they've set up. And they're pushing against it must be this way and what are they telling me it's pushing back because if you push a swing it pushes back if you push a swing it pushes back true so how do you stop the pushing back you allow it to be able to swing to the failure see the whole structure here is this person is scared of being broke they've given it power what a weak perspective that is I'm scared of being broke. What are they really saying? I don't trust myself to be able to create. I don't trust myself. See, we, we, know, we, we know that if you go broke, you, you can start something else. You can start again. You know that you've got good friends and family and people that will help you out. You know. I'm, oh, yeah. Isn't it true? We know. Like, logically, we know that my business screws up, I'll go get a job somewhere. 
you know, you know what I mean? Like we know this, like, it's not like it's a, it was like we live in a, a world, you know, so they're so scared of it. And we, we know there's not really going to be a big problem there, but, but we're so scared of it that we never get to, to raise up. So we never get to just focus. So this person, they say, you know, I'm so, I feel this pendulum swing. What they're actually saying is most of my focus is on what I don't want, which is to go broke. And then some of it is on what I do want. And so all that's happening is I'm getting this swing of sometimes I have money, then I don't. Sometimes I have money, then I don't. Sometimes I have money, then I don't. This is bad. This is good. And, and, and they're all there. So, so let me just ask, and this might be a good, a good, little, a good little thing here. Uh, who, who, who lives in this conflict? Who lives in this conflict where uh, that, you know, that, that, that scared, uh, that's scared of it, hey? Yeah, it's all right. Just acknowledge it. I'm scared of being broke and I prefer this. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So, so yeah, it's all good. Just acknowledge it. It's no, you know, I'm not, we all get to have a beautiful human experience. Okay. Okay. So, so just do this. Okay. So we're going to use the theme of broke or being poor. Close your eyes and I want you to actively avoid going broke. Like in your mind, what would you do to ensure you don't go broke? How would life be? I'm going to avoid it. I'm going to make sure I never go broke. What do you do? How does it feel? Just close your eyes and just ask yourself, I'm going to actively avoid being broke. What is it like? How does it feel? That's it. Now that you're doing that, is the worry, and let's say that you're, you know, you're in the opposite of this. So you somehow you've made, you're making money. Is the fear or the worry of going broke, has it left you? Has that feeling left you, that fear of not having enough? Open your eyes and let me know. Did it, did it leave? By, by actively resisting something and, and doing the opposite, did it leave at all? Yeah, everyone's typing in, no, it didn't leave. Not really. Okay, so we can all acknowledge that by resisting something, it doesn't go away. We can all acknowledge by resisting it, actively resisting it, uh, it doesn't go away. We'll, we'll try something else. Try something else, okay? Try something else. So close your eyes. And this time, I want you to accept the possibility of going broke. Accept that it's possible. Just allow yourself to accept that it's possible. It's possible. That's a possibility. And breathe in the possibility of it. It's possible. And as you allow that to be possible, allow everything else to be possible too. If that's possible, well, then making lots, making a little, making heaps, making way more, everything else, just allow everything else to be possible too. Allow it all to be possible. And now just choose to rise up in your consciousness. Just choose to observe it all from your superconscious. So just rise up and choose, choose to observe it. Just choose to acknowledge all of this from your superconscious and it's all possible. And from this higher perspective, just what would you, you know, what flavor of life would you love? And now drop back down and experience that. <laughs> there you go. Open your eyes. Let me know. What's it like when you when you accept it, when you bring it in? How did that feel? When you accept its possibility, when you don't give it the power. Better, like dancing in the rain. Easy, someone says. Yeah, cool. Expansive, it feels good. Easy, no resistance. It loses its power. Thanks, Bennett. It loses its power. Then this is this is cool, isn't it? And if those of you listening on the replay, just acknowledge that, hey? It loses its power when you say, hey, I'll. 
I'm not going to accept that's its possibility. And when it loses its power, it loses its focus. So you get more focus that you can put on what you really want. And so now you've got more focus on what you really want. You're able then to take the correct action and make it happen. Now, many of us, we won't just be able to simply do that. You need to come and do recode and be a part of it. But it's a, it's a good little example, isn't it? Is what you resist owns you. So as soon as you resist it, as soon as you can't allow it to be a possibility, it owns you. No, no, that's that's uh, that, and that's it, eh? Hey? That's it. That that's not quite right, hey, Kerry. Um, you don't you don't just be it, um, but but there's a lot more. You must you must also take the correct action. Yeah. Yeah, but, but yeah, that's it. It's not just that. Yeah. All right, I might have time for one more question. Hey. All right. So this question comes, uh, comes up a lot. And uh, the, the, the question is about how do I know what I should do? Right? Because we get end results and things that we choose that we love. And, and, uh, and when we choose that, we say, oh, I'd love that. And then we go, well, I'm here now. And so I need to take it. I need to take an action. I need to turn this into reality. True. We need, we need, so we, we must. A mentor of mine once said, Chris, there's never anything to do but action to take. And that's because uh, there's no opposite to action. You're always taking some action. Even a perceived inaction is still an action. Uh, you know, it's just, this might be called um, resting. So there's always an action, nothing to do, but always an action to take. So how do you know what action to take? Whenever someone asks me, Chris, I don't know the action to take. That they're simply not observing what is obvious. They're simply not observing what is obvious. If, if they've got a true choice and they're truly in their true choice of what they want to create, there is something obvious that they need to do that they're editing out of their awareness they say i want to uh have a better marriage and my current reality is we're not talking the obvious action is to talk it's not that there's not an obvious action it's that they have an identity issue with the action so they won't allow themselves to do it many of my coaches uh, who want to build a business the obvious action is that they need to put on a webinar and do a demonstration. That's obvious. That's what they need to do. They need to demonstrate this work. They're certified in it. They're one of the first 500 people certified in the magnetic line method and the, and, and the superconscious recode. So what's obvious is they need to put on a webinar and show people what they can do. That's obvious. There's no, there's nothing else they need. That's what they need to do. Where are all my cert coaches on here? We're some certified coaches, right? And that's obvious. It's what you need to do. You need, you need to do that. And, and that's what must happen. Yet they won't do it. Many people say, oh, you know, I, wanna, I want to, uh, you know, um, buy a new house or I want to make more money. I want to, you know, obvious action is I must do. There's always the obvious. And so whenever you find yourself, I don't know what to do, ask yourself, what is the obvious action that will get me moving in the right direction? That I'm, that I'm editing from my awareness. Hey, isn't that a good question? That I'm editing from my awareness because it's, 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 it's always obvious. You know, you, you want to start a business and you don't know how to do marketing. Well, you should hire a marketer. Oh, I don't have the money to hire a marketer. Well, partner with one. It's, it's you know, it's obvious. I, I you know, I, I want to become, uh, I want to become a, a, an, an actor. Uh, I want to act in movies. Uh, okay, great. Well, what's obvious is, you know, go audition. You know, I want to write a book. I want to be a best-selling author. 
write a book. What's well, obvious, you must start writing. Oh, Chris, I don't know what to write about. Well, start with something you, and, and keep going. You see what I'm saying? Is, is it, it's, it's obvious. And so, so whenever you or anyone you know is, oh, I don't know what I should do yet. Yeah, they really do know, hey, they do. And they, ju they just do. They do know. But there is an aspect of them that is not allowing them to do that thing. True. Is it true? Like they know that they need to save more. Oh, Chris, I never have enough money. Stop eating out so much. You know, oh, Chris, I really want to do your course. I don't have the $49 a week to pay. Oh, okay. Go get an extra job to make $49 a week. Like it's, it's obvious. Is it, it, isn't that obvious? It's like, oh, I really want to do it, Chris, but I don't know how to, I don't know what's obvious. You just you know, go find someone to babysit, get a babysitter, like go walk some dogs in the morning, uh, shovel some snow. I don't know what you need to do to make an extra $49 a week to do something. It doesn't seem very difficult to me, you know, get a sales job, we make commissions. I, I don't know. See, there, there's always an obvious, isn't it? I think we should, uh, I think we should, as a team, we, we should all agree to write the, the sequel to the secret and uh, and it should be called the obvious. <laughs> the sequel, the sequel to the you know the revolutionary book, the secret is the obvious. <laughs> it would really only be like three pages long. What is the obvious action you should take? <laughs> I'd buy it. I'd buy it. It'd be the best investment ever. We should make it really expensive uh, and, and then put that plastic around it. And then when people open it, they're like, because the knowledge is so dead, they're like, just take the obvious action. <laughs> and they'll be like, for life changing. <laughs> Someone write the book, I'll buy it. It needs to be one, one page only book. <laughs> <laughs> well maybe it's 300 pages just with the same thing repeated stop deleting the obvious stop deleting the obvious but but i really do mean it it, it, it is um it, it is true that there is always an obvious action it's just whether or not we're going to allow ourselves to take it yeah you know and so then they they, they take the obvious action then, then they will they will get to the the destination, and so the 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 question that you must ask yourself is, what would the person I'm becoming do? You know, what would the person who has that result? What would they do? And that and that's how you that's how you move forward and and you know, and strip away uh, your your limitation and move forward. You know, leaving it behind. It's kind of like you know you see a cricket or an insect, they leave the skin behind and they move forward. It's kind of like that. It's you, you, you're moving. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I, I love you guys so much. Thank you very much for being here. To everyone that's listening to the replay, I hope that it was very valuable. Those that were live, I appreciate you. Uh, it's a pretty easy format, isn't it? Uh, you, send in, you send in questions and I do my best to answer them. You know, we really have the, the best conscious education on the planet starts at $49 a week. Very, very, very affordable uh, for the work that's involved. There's, uh, there's over six hours of live coaching every single week. And there's a full online university and we do a training once a quarter, uh, three day full intensive. It's a year long program. It's not small. It's got everything that someone would need. It's the last program that you'd ever need to buy. And uh, I'll put the, uh, the link in the chat for those that are here live. If you want to join, it'll be underneath the video as well, or send in an email. We do have a mastery program available now as well, which where we teach you intuition, uh, deep creation, and also how to do the recode process. Uh, so if you want to go next level and go mastery, uh, you can as well. And then we have a certification too, for those who know this is their work and uh, would like to take this out and be a professional. So I love you all so much. Thanks for all your good vibes. Thanks for sharing this out there on YouTube and uh, Spotify and iTunes. Uh, got lots happening. 
appreciate every single one of you. And always my desire is, is to share what's true. Take what you love, take what's good for you and go and create your life and leave what, leave what you don't love. Hey, you're powerful. And uh, this is just a, it's just an offer of knowledge uh, that I think is really good. I truly do hope to see you in one of our courses or programs and look forward to meeting you in person soon. Hey, we're going to do more of these sessions. We're going to have a, a bit of a week off next week, but we will keep doing Q&A. So if you're in masterclass, please keep sending in your questions. I will endeavor to get through them. I see there's another 30 questions already sitting there uh, uh, for me. Remember, you are powerful. You're not broken. You create whatever you want just the way you are. Once you tune into the aspect of you that is unblemished, perfect, the creator, the super conscious drop in the source field, when you live from that orientation, magic will happen. I, I guarantee it. I've seen it thousands of times in, in others and uh, very excited to be having my book come out. Uh, I believe uh, we're under six weeks away from having that little amazing thing out in the world, changing lives. So I'm also going to need your help to get that out to as many people as possible. Uh, the book's called You're Not Broken, The Five Steps to Activate Your Superconscious Magic. Love you all so much and uh, can't wait to do this again. Stay magnetic, stay focused, create what you love. Bye, guys. You got questions? and I've got answers.